What is going on, Pokemon collectors and investors? Today we are talking about two sets that I think are severely underrated. One from the Scarlet and Violet era and one from Sword and Shield. We're going to be looking at the top cards, we're going to be looking at the sets, and we're going to be looking at booster box prices. And I'm going to break down why I think that these are two of currently probably some of the best sets that you could be purchasing, um, either just to rip for your collection or for investing purposes. Now, we are just going to jump straight into the first one here. And if you guys are not familiar with the channel, uh, we do daily uh, deep dives on Pokemon, um, mostly from a sealed investing side, but also just from a collecting standpoint. And we are going to touch on Paradox Rift. Now, before you uh, skip forward in the video to get to the next set, let, hear me out about Paradox Rift. I think uh, we're going to get into exactly why uh, I think that this is a very, very uh good pickup to get starting off we'll just touch on the booster box price real quick um, tcg player um, currently you can pick these up for just over a hundred bucks and um, not too expensive uh, it, um, you want to get these obviously for as low as you can uh, but it seems like kind of those days of 80 90 dollar booster boxes might be behind us um, for any set but what we are seeing here on the past month, we're seeing a decent amount of sales, but and a good price point, decent entry point. You have to remember that the new MSRP for the new set is $163, not the $140 from before. But we can get a case here. We'll look at the cases real quick. Sub $600, um, $595. This is TCG player. Uh, you can obviously get these other places. I'll show you uh, another example here. So this is Forge and Fire Gaming, uh, and you can get this for $589 for a sealed case so a little bit cheaper than tcg they will also double box it if you want and that puts it to 600 so they'll ship the case box inside so it keeps your box so uh, keep that in mind so a little bit of a price difference there but uh probably worth paying that extra 10 bucks i would say now let's talk about why like why am i picking paradox rift okay and it has to do with the set now this look at how many so these are the irs or illustration rares Look how many there are. We'll start, you know, coming down here. There's, what is this? One, two, three, four, five. There's six per uh, row here. So we got six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 34 IRs. That's huge. And let's just take a quick look at them. Um, there's not a ton of like really great irs but there's a few really good ones and it's it's a large set and we're going to talk about why that matters okay um obviously on this top row I, i've been vocal about this before i like the look of this toad scroll card not a popular pokemon but i like the look of it the magby is adorable um even snow run is kind of okay i like what's going on i just don't like the pokemon as much um mantike's a cool card um the swim pods are kind of okay um plusle and and minin are doing some big moves right now uh super adorable i can't go wrong with those um then we have blitzel which i feel like is a super underrated i've talked about the artwork of this card really love it obviously the big dog here is the groudon uh absolutely stunning card right but then as we move down um this this yveltal is super nice uh, if you've seen it in person it's a really great looking card um morpeko is interesting from I like the colors and the perspective here. Steelix, obviously, uh, if you guys haven't seen, uh, we talked about this card before that popped off. Um, great looking card. I love how he's lifting the guys up there. Super love it. Um, Cyclozar from the game. I feel like this one's okay. And I do like um, Porygon. Porygon Z and Swablu. Um, Swablu because it has the Altaria SIR. So a lot of IRs and a lot of SIRs. So these are the SIR um, Pokemon. Um, Garchomp, Golsopod's pretty cool. Iron Hands is okay. Iron Valiant is really good, so it's a Gardevoir um, variant, which is cool. Sandy Shocks is okay, but it's really the Roaring Moon, the Altaria, and the Iron Valiant are kind of, and the Garchomp to a certain extent. These are the big SIRs. So what I'm getting at with this is that this set, um, and then there's obviously SIR supporters here, and there's a lot of gold cards. This is a big set, and the pull rates were a little bit different back then, but it's hard to pull like, we're going to look at the dollar value on some of these cards, but it's really hard to pull some of these cards because it's such a big set. And that is going to play a factor. While it it's obviously not the best set from Scarlet and Violet, I think at its current price point, it is extremely undervalued. And I think a lot of people 
are going to be chasing a lot of these cards and it's too cheap right now honestly <clears throat> in my opinion so yeah when you start looking at these cards you start looking at it's just a stacked set um, so that's kind of why I have it picked as the first one. Um, real quick, before we go any further, um, I just wanted to touch on this. We have a free giveaway that we're doing right now. If you go to the channel and uh, check out this video, you can see how to enter. Um, we just hit 5,000 subscribers, so I will be announcing the winners of this. I'll probably give it one or two more days just to give um, more people time to enter. But if you want to enter, we're giving away a Japanese 151 booster box to one winner. A PSA 10 of your choice. I'll give you like, whoever wins that, I'll give you like five chances or uh, five different options and you can pick whichever card you want at least a $50 value is the minimum there and then we're going to give uh, some sleeve boosters to a third winner so uh, three winners if you want to enter uh, watch this video check that out um, but back to Paradox Rift so the Roaring Moon is currently the top card in the set um, I think it's a great looking card I do own this card um, in a PSA 10 and it looks really great in person so what I really like I like um, I think the Pokemon is popular enough right and i love the pose of of everything that's going on and i like these uh scream tails these jigglypuff variants um i absolutely love that they're like screaming in terror absolutely love it um what i see that sh is showing strength this card's kind of gotten beaten down into the ground i'm not gonna lie it if you look at this like yeah it's just down but what i'm seeing on the chart is we are seeing especially on the one on the one year you can see i, I mean it was over a hundred dollars for a while it's the market has determined that that is at least a fifty dollar card. Like it has hit its bottom. It's seeing support there. So um, I think that this card only has room to go up. So if the chase card only has room to grow, the sealed booster box price only has room to grow, right? So every good set needs a good chase. I think this is a good chase. But we look take a look at the next card. Could this be the chase? The Groudon has been extremely popular. This is the second most expensive card. And you can tell why. Because it's stunning. And it's hard to pull because it's an IR. There's so many IRs. So it's actually really difficult to pull. So it makes it rare. I could see a scenario in which this kind of pulls a Magikarp and it overtakes, uh, like the Magikarp from Paldea, and it overtakes. And I could see it where it becomes the most popular or most expensive. I don't think that that's going to happen. Um, personally, but if it did, I I wouldn't be surprised. It's very hard to predict these things, but when you have a great chase card and a second, like a close second card, um, you know, and right now, like same thing. If we pull up this, this chart's a little different because obviously it had a huge run up here and then it's kind of cooled off. But now it's kind of we're seeing it looks like it maybe has found its bottom um, potentially. It kind of depends. It might be coming down just a little bit more. But I don't picture this card dropping too much more. And then if these box prices start coming up, I could picture, I could see this running up as well. Um, then we look at another card, the Altaria. Um, this is a stunning looking card in person. Not the most popular Pokemon, but, you know, we're looking at like a the third most expensive here. Um, so, and, and hard to pull. Once again, that is what has made the Greninja so popular. Um, besides it being a popular Pokemon, but it's hard to pull, right? And with this set, it more has to do with the, the number of cards in the set. So, um, but on the chart here, we're seeing on the, on the one year, you can see it's starting to bottom out again. Had its run up, it retraced a little bit, still, still above where it started, and it's seeing a bottom. So that is indicating to me when you're seeing it start to level out, the market's accepting it for what it is, that these cards are going to have the ability to run up, and including the boxes. So... Then another card that I really like from the set, we talked about this, the Gardevoir variant, the Iron Valiant. Um, we'll pull up the... See, so this card, same thing. It's hit its bottom. It didn't really run up um, besides after release. It was a $70 card at one point, and it's kind of hit its bottom right here. It, 26, and then it came back up, and then it came back down. Um, same thing. I could picture this with the uh, Tyranitar variant in the background. Um, cool looking card, right? Um... It's just, it's a great, you know, like fourth card in the set. So, um, just showing a little bit of strength there. So that's why I say, um, Paradox has strength. You got, I, in my opinion, and you know, um, these sets are so subjective. You do have to keep in mind that not everybody likes every set or every card from every set. And that's fine. But when I look at this, I see a solid one, two, three, four, and lots of depth. So, um, that is why I think that Paradox is undervalued. I think it should be looked at. 
Uh, I think it's too cheap. It's far too cheap. And I know it's widely available, and that's what happens. Uh, you guys have to understand. Uh, this is widely available at distributors. It's widely, widely available everywhere. And that's, that's kind of what happens with most sets. It's widely available until it's not. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that once this set starts to increase in value, whether that's uh, most likely the box price and the singles, uh, people are going to be jumping onto this. So this is kind of one of those things where you kind of want to be ahead of the curve. You can still get this box for just barely over 100, or you can get a case for under 600. So um, I like Paradox. I just wanted to give it its props. Now, next up, we're going to go back to Sword and Shield. And currently, if I was to buy any Sword and Shield box, uh, this is where I would be at. Silver Tempest. And we're going to dive into it, okay? So, Silver Tempest, um, the interesting thing, we've, we've talked about this before, it's still available on the Pokemon Center for 143 right? You see what it's been selling for right here? 164 well above 143 um, The listed median price is 180 so this is going to be going up, okay? Um, this, is a, this is a pretty good set. It's kind of... Um, Obviously, once again, it's not the strongest set because the best sets aren't going to be the cheapest. But because it's available right now and because it has, we start to look at the set list, it has a very good chase card. The Lugia V is a chase. What did I say every set needs? A good chase, right? And then we're going to talk about it. the main set. So this also has a trainer gallery. But this main set it starts to get pretty weak after Lugia, but the uh, trainer gallery sort of makes up for it. And like I said, it is not the strongest set. I'm not saying that this is the best sword and shield set. I'm just saying that it is undervalued currently. So the Lugia, I think, is undervalued as a card long-term. I think, <sighs> brilliant card, right? We'll take a look at that. Um, absolutely, absolutely love this artwork. Um, you can see on the, on the chart here, it had its run up. It's dipped down. It's already come back above. It's so. Um, it's once it was, sorry, like 200, came down to like 166, and now it's already up into the 170s. So that shows me a lot of strength there. That um, it might be just leveling out or kind of starting another run potentially. A um, little too early to know if it's going. I'm not saying that these alts alt arts are going on a run, but um, so number one card from the set, number two card from the set, Reggie Drago. Now this card in the last month is on a run up. You could have gotten this for 17 bucks and now it's in the 20s. 18% move, but not the most popular Pokemon, but a decent second, and I'll tell you why it's a decent second. It has nothing to do with Reggie Drago. It has to do with the fact that there's a Lugia in the background. Uh, extremely Lugia, extremely, extremely popular Pokemon. People will chase this card uh, just because of the background. It, some people will. Whether you won't, uh, you know, if you're watching this video and you don't go, oh, I don't want it just because of that. That's fine. Some people will. Okay? A lot of people will. So, that's just kind of a fact. Uh, legendaries, legendary like Lugia is going to, you know, pull some attention. Now, where this kind of makes up is, and I don't know why TCG Player does this. It's one of my biggest complaints. They put the uh, trainer gallery cards in a separate thing. So, if you look at, really, uh, this next card that we're going to talk about is actually the second most valuable card. And you can see the the uh, cards right here the trainer gallery for silver tempest isn't the strongest either but it has enough that's what this has i well i think paradox is abundant this set has enough now we take a look at the red quasa here uh the v max it's on a downturn it was in the 50 dollars range um when you take this chart out to the one year it kind of does that same thing it had a big run up and it's kind of leveling off right? We're seeing the start of the level off. Um, it, we might have hit the bottom. Um, once again, keep in mind that we don't ever know. If anybody says for a fact that we know, know that this is the bottom or this is the top or anything, it is kind of impossible to know for certain on any of these. But So you have to keep that in mind that this is just what it looks like, okay? And if you just take a look at this card, I absolutely love this card. I love the trainer, I love the Rayquaza, the pose, everything going on. So this is kind of like your second card. And then you go to the Reggie Drago as being your third card, which I think is decent enough. Um, then you go to the Blaziken VMAX, which I do think is undervalued um, at 10 bucks. 
I think that's too cheap. So I think this gives you, when you look at it, I think this gives you one strong card, two very strong second, three lesser strong, and so it's a little, it might be a little bit weaker, and then the Blaziken. But um, point being is that I think that this is a set that is worth investing in because there is enough to chase. Um, when you look at both of these sets, you look at both of these sets for long term, people will eventually, and it's not right now because the box price hasn't accumulated, and this is what happens with every set. It's happened with Twi uh, like Twilight, it happened with Fusion Strike. Um, people don't like the sets a lot of the times until the value is there, and a lot of people flip-flop. Right, so that's why sometimes you have to be a little bit ahead of the curve. A lot of people only like some cards or cards in general because they have a monetary value, and I think that these are two of those sets where once I think once uh, once Silver Tempest gets above two hundred a box, I think people are really going to start to notice um, because it's it, it's still on the Pokemon Center, it's still available, and it's going to take time for both of these because they were printed heavily. Um, for these boxes to be purchased and to be opened so it might take a while to eat through some of the supply that's available but once they start to become scarce the box prices start to go up the single prices start to go up um this is i mean this is just pokemon investing in a nutshell it's kind of it but i think that these are these two sets are at a unique place where they're good buys so if i if i was starting now with what's available um, these would be two of the sets that I would be looking into the most from these last two eras. Um, obviously, there's other great investments all over the place, but um, I just wanted to give these sets a little bit of attention because I do think that they deserve it. I think they're great sets, and they got some room to run. So um, that is going to do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content, so do me a favor. Go down below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know if you guys agree. You think Paradox is trash? You think Paradox is good? Silver Tempest, good or bad? Let me know. I will catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.